Alrighty, so in one of my previous videos where I was talking about the Ableton vocoder liquid technique, someone asked in the comments how I created the original source there. Um, that sounds like this. And going off the name, this is probably a serum patch, but unfortunately, the sad news is I was a fool and did not actually save this when I made it a while ago. Um, but I still figured that this would be a good opportunity to show like my patching and sound deconstruction reconstruction process. Uh, so I went ahead and sort of matched it as close as I could get it offline. I did a lot of the legwork here um, before I just opened up the patch before your eyes. Um, and I'm just going to sort of like walk through it backwards with like the modulation and effects, everything disabled and rebuild it right now to save time. Um, so I got Pro-L, it's just doing like safety limiting stuff, it's not really contributing to the sound that much. And by default, it's, you know, it's basic shapes, whatever. Um, and that sounds like this. And as you probably just saw, um, I dropped it three octaves and then I used, uh, I loaded up the Harmonic Subtle wavetable because going from the name Harmonic Dirt, Harm Dirt, that's probably short for Harmonic Dirt. Um, and then I also enabled the bend plus minus warp mode, and that sounds more like this. Which is like, it's getting us there, but it's obviously like way too quiet. And one of the main characteristics of the sound that I was going for was like loud and distorted and crunchy. So I enabled the distortion and the compressor pretty early on the design process here. And I was just like designing into those uh, to help inform my decisions a little bit better. So that sounds like this. Uh, which is closer, but it's very static. And one of the key uh, defining things about the sound was that it had this, this like modulation shape that goes up and down. And it sounds like it's modulating the master tuning and the like some sort of LFO map to the uh, frequency, the cutoff frequency of a filter or something like that. So that's, that's basically what I set up here. Um, it's modulating the master tuning by like five and then this first LFO is modulating the rate of the second LFO um, by like 37 thereabouts. Um, it's also mapped to filter cutoff and wavetable position and wavetable warping to give it just like a little bit of extra movement. Why is this not unbypassing? Thank you. Um, so that sounds a little something like this. It's got like that drifting pitch that I'm looking for. And then with the filter enabled with the drive up and the fat up and the cutoff modulating with the second LFO, it sounds like this. Getting closer. Uh, I then turned on the chorus and phaser to give it uh, a little bit of stereo width and then just like a little bit more nasally quality uh, respectively. That sounds like this. Pretty subtle, right? Um, and then I think one of the bigger things is I enable this EQ, which has a uh, low frequency bump that gets uh, modulated by that first LFO. It like sweeps from low to high. Um, and then it also has like a low mid cut around like 400 hertz because that sounds like a idiosyncratic move that I would do. Uh, that sounds like this. just got that like throaty growly uh ness that like climbs as the uh lfo sweeps upwards um and that's pretty close it's just missing like a little extra crunch in the low end with a sub oscillator and then obviously the elephant in the room is the huge sweep of like white noise that happens over the course of the sound so i went ahead and enabled those as well And at this point, that's like, I don't know, 40% of the way there. Um, I wasn't nearly satisfied with the crunchiness of it. So I went ahead and slapped Decapitator on top, uh, set it to end mode and turned up the drive to 5.5 to get us a little bit more crunchy. That is definitely way closer. Um, the last little cherry on top, which is, I don't know, maybe a little bit of a cheat is I put pro Q after that to, with the EQ matching thing. And if you don't know how that works, it basically like it takes a snapshot of a, your input source and lets you imprint on, imprint it on 
uh, something else. So if you open up the EQ match thing here and then play your sound back, the original one. It'll create this like uh, frequency map of what that essentially looks like. And you can save that as a reference spectrum uh, and call it whatever you want. And then from our recreation, we can go into the EQ match menu and load up that same imprint. And when we, it first needs to listen to the, the input source again, so we'll play that back. And then you can see it's like suggesting an EQ curve that it can apply to our input sound to get it closer to our target sound. Um, so when we click match, you can see it'll start off with like 10 points uh, that get you like pretty close. But I just like to go ahead and crank it because I like turning knobs up and also it gets us into that like dip and dots territory where you can see all the little EQ points all over the place and that's very satisfying. Uh, so you hit finish to apply it and that'll sound like this. Which, I don't know, that's pretty close to my ears. Um, I'm going to turn down the gain of that bump just a little bit because I think that's a little bit extreme. And I'm also going to like tune this uh, low pass filter a little bit so we can get just a little bit of increased fidelity and hear what that sounds like. And yeah, that sounds about as close as I'm going to get it before this video drags on any longer. <laughs> so thank you for listening. I hope you found this useful. And let me know if there are any other specifics I covered that you want me to dive deeper on in the future.